All right, so here's a, uh, another cross-section of an x-ray tube. It's a little bit more graphic. So you have the glass envelope. Here is your, the metal plate, okay? That's why when I do my symbol, I do my symbol like this for the anode. And then your filament, there are two wires. This is your cathode end. There's two of them over here, and that's why I draw the cathode with two screw <coughs> lines. But notice the distance between the cathode and the anode is just centimeters. It's not even that great apart. So um, MA is going to generate electrons. Electrons travel from A to B. Electrons strike the anode. X-rays are produced. Those going through the window is known as the primary, radi primary beam. Everything else is called secondary. secondary radiation. Very good. All right. <clears throat> All right, so it's something like this. Okay, you have the glass housing. Within the glass housing, you have your metal disc or plate. Okay, over here. The filaments are going to be located within there. Okay, and if we look at this end a little bit closer, this is where you're going to see the two wires. See the two wires? Okay. All right, let's, take a, let's look at uh, the x-ray tube components a little closer. So let's look at the negative end. The negative end of the tube is also known as the cathode. Here is where you're gonna find two coiled wires, thus my two squiggly lines. Two coiled wires. They operate on the same concept as that of a toaster. What happens when you heat up a toaster? What happens to those wires? They start to glow. Mm -hmm. They start to glow, but what is it emanating? Heat. It's emanating heat. In the case of our x-ray tube, the filaments is heated into incandescence, which means into a glow. Okay, so it's heated into a glow. But it, instead of it emanating heat, it gets so hot that electrons are starting to jump off those wires. Okay, so the greater the MA, the more electrons that are jumping off those wires. This process of which the electrons are being boiled off from the filament wires is known as thermionic emission. The process in which the electrons are being boiled off from the filament is known as thermionic emission thermionic emission. The, pro okay. the process in which electrons are boiled off from the filament is known as thermionic emission. And as we said, the greater the MA, more electrons are boiled off, right? The less the MA, less electrons are boiled off. This process is still called thermionic emission. Okay. The metal of choice for the coiled wires is tungsten. Tungsten because it has a high melting point, a high atomic number. Okay. It has a high melting point of 3,400, about 3,400 degrees Celsius or 6,100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a lot of heat, right, that it can deal with. So tungsten is a choice. Okay, let's keep on going here. Here is a cross section of the cathode end with the two wires. You have a small filament and you have a large filament. Specifically, let's use the correct term small focal spot size. That is the correct term for the filament. You have a small focal spot size and you have a large focal spot size. 
small focal spot size, large focal spot size. All right? So you have a small wire and you have a large wire. Well, why do we have two different wires? Now, before we move forward again, when activating, because we are controlling which, what we're going to use here, because we're going to control MA, we're also going to control which focal spot size we are going to use. They are used independently. They can't be used at the same time, so you're either selecting the small one or the large one before you make an x-ray, okay? So why do we have a large and why do we have a small? Let me see here, do we have any? Okay, here we go. So why do we have a small and why do we have a large? One for greater or lesser MA needed. Okay, you're on the right track. Larger Case. body. Okay. Larger body parts. There you go, okay? So the small is for smaller body parts and the large is for larger body parts. <laughs> yeah, plain and simple. Small for uh, small, large for large. Okay? But can I use small for larger body parts? I can't because remember, if I put too much MA on the small one, it's going to boil off. It's going to burn. I'm going to fry it. I'm going to cause tube failure. But there is a backup uh, safety mechanism for that so you can't overload it. Okay, but what's more important is the difference between the large and the small is that yes, you have to use smaller MAs for this, but the small one is going to give you the better detail, the better detail of your image. It's going to give you the best detail of your image. We need the small for smaller body parts, for example, like bones. If you ever look at the anatomy of the bone, it's not solid. The surfaces are not smooth. There's a lot of detail to them, right? There's lines, there's little potholes, little crevices, little dimples, but there's a lot of stuff going on with bony anatomy. You guys agree? Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on with bony anatomy, so we need to Use one of those two to give us a great detailed image. Well, how does that work? Okay, well, small filament, electrons are being boiled off. Because it's in a smaller space or area, the electrons are tightly bounded together. So that when it makes x-rays, the x-rays are also going to be tight and closer together. Whereas with the larger filament, the electrons are a little bit more spread out, right? So when it makes x-rays, the x-rays are going to be spread as well. So if the x-rays are tightly bound together, you're going to get an image on this side where it looks something Can you guys make out what that is? Right? Can you guys you can make it out, right? It's a happy face, right? Now if I take the same number of x-rays, but they're spread out, same number of x-rays, but they're spread out, can you make can you make sense of that? Not as much. It's not as defined. Okay? It's not as defined. Okay? So if they're tightly together, you can get a better image. It's like when you're buying a computer screen or a TV screen. What is it that you're looking for? Pixelation. Pixels, the number of dots per inch. The more per inch that you have, the more detail it is. The less dots per inch that you have, the less detail that you have. Make sense? Right? All right. So small filament for better detail, okay? We can't use this for larger body parts because for larger body parts, I want to use more MA. This is where you can, you can impress more energy on a larger filament, okay? It can withstand more heat for larger body parts, okay? 
Any questions? So can we use the smaller one, a few of the smaller one and put them together? Say it again, one more time. Bigger oh, how about if we use the smaller filament a mm -hmm. few times for the larger one? You're only going to answer it one time. If we want to have a better detail. Okay, I'm going to get to that later on. So the question is, well, how are we going to get better detail? We're going to talk about it in line focus principle. Okay? We're going to talk about line focus principle. Now, before I move forward, okay, before I move forward, what does it mean to have MA and KV? Those are the factors that we're going to, we're going to control, right, to create our x-rays. MA, we said, was quantity, the number of x-rays, right, number of electrons. And KV is the force behind those electrons, right, to drive it from A to B. This is how you're going to apply it, and I'll, I do a lot of analogies in my lectures because science, sometimes a lot of us can't grasp it immediately. However, if you compare it to things that you are familiar with, so I do a lot of, again, comparisons to movies, uh, food, um, just anything that a majority of you guys will understand, and you can make a comparison of what you learn with what you know, okay? So for example here, let's talk about wanting to paint this room, okay? Well, let's just start off by painting this one wall here, okay? If I wanted to paint just this one wall, do I need a lot of paint? No. Versus if I wanted to paint the entire wall, the entire room. So if I wanted just to paint this wall, do I need a lot of paint? The answer is no. No. Okay? That's your MA. Okay. I don't need a lot of paint. I don't need a lot of MA to color this wall. Follow? Mm -hmm. Whereas if I needed to paint this entire room, is that one bucket of paint going to be good enough? No. No. So I'm going to need more paint, more MA, more x-rays, okay, to get the job done. Therefore, small body part, small MA. Large body parts, large MA. Okay? Now, where does KV come in? KV is the force behind the electrons. The analogy I'm going to make here is the manpower, okay? If I wanted to get this wall painted, one or two people can get that done, right? Let's talk about the same time frame. If I wanted to get that, this entire room painted at the same time that I wanted to get this one wall painted, is the one or two people going to be able to accomplish that? No. What do I need? More manpower. More manpower or more? KV. KV. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. You guys are getting it. Very good. All right. Focusing cup. We're still at the cathode end. All right, guys, we're still at the cathode end. You have your cathode, you have your two filaments. You have a small and you have a large. You have a small and you have a large. Encompassing that area, okay, is what's known as a focusing cuff. So what happens is, through the process of thermionic emission, as the electrons are being boiled off, are they going to remain in that space? What charge does an electron have? Negative. Electro they're negative. So naturally, what are they going? Uh, what are they going to want to do? Go to the positive side. They're going to want to spread out, right? So they're going to want to <laughs> spread out because of their negative charges. So if I were to put some sort of contraption around it, let's call this the focusing cup. What charge do you think this focusing cup will have to compress the electrons together? Negative. Also negative, but it's going to have a stronger charge than what they have. Okay? So it's going to be a much stronger negative charge to compress the electrons together. So then we, when we send them from this end to this end by applying KV, they're going to stay together as a group. 
Okay, that's your focusing cup. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Okay, let's continue to talk about what's happening over here at the cathode end. We already know what thermionic emission is. So thermionic emission are the electrons being boiled off. The higher the MA, the more electrons that are boiled off to produce more x-rays, right? Let's talk about what's known as space charge effect at this end. So again, you have your electrons boiling off through the process of thermionic emission. So here's my question. Is the group of electrons charge going to be stronger than the charge of a single electron? Is the group, the charge of a group of electrons, are they going to be larger than the charge of a single electron? Larger. Yes, right? So what's going to happen here is any electrons, at some point, they're not going to be able to jump off those wires because the charge out here is so strong, it's preventing them from coming out. This is known as the space charge effect. Okay, so it prevents subsequent electrons from being boiled off due to the electrostatic repulsion of the larger group of electrons. It's kind of a safety feature, okay? Not something that the uh, technicians did with the equipment. It's a safety feature on a natural occurrence. Okay, so that way you can't overproduce x-rays. All right, questions? Are we good? Next slide. Slide. I don't like this slide. Let's, the next one. Uh, let's talk about the anode. The anode. The anode is going to be the positive, positive portion of the the X-ray tube. Okay. As I said earlier, the um, the anode is basically a metal plate that when the electrons strike it. The electrons are going to change into x-rays, okay? We're going to discuss two kinds, a stationary plate and a rotating plate, or a stationary anode and a rotating disc. <coughs> All right, so the first one here is a stationary anode. It's basically just a block of metal, okay, which is copper. Why is copper used? What do we know about copper? Good in what? Removing heat okay so copper is good in removing heat so the block here is going to be copper but at the face of this is going to be tungsten again there's tungsten again didn't we use tungsten for the filament we're also going to be using it for our target the target the target is the area in which the electrons strike the anode this is known as the target so it's made out of tungsten now this type of anode are used for low quality type of examinations like dental exams, maybe bony work where we don't need a lot of strong x-rays. It can also be used for portable examinations. So again, the key here is we're not using high powered energy to create our images. Okay? So low MA? Low MA, low KV, okay? But not a lot of power. All right? But the problem with this is that if you do use high MA or high KV, here's my analogy now. What happens, how, you guys do a lot of watering of your plants or gardening or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. I do sometimes. These days you get a ticket for that. <laughs> so let's just say you got your, your uh, hose, okay? And you were, let's just say you're watering your grass, okay? But instead of moving the hose around, the hose is in one place and the water is hitting one place on the ground. What happens to that area of the ground that keeps getting bombarded with water gets over flooded. and over and over again? What happens? It gets flooded. Okay, it gets flooded, but generally what, what's happening there? 
It's coming back up. You're creating a divot. You're creating a divot. Okay? Eventually, that'll happen too. With higher energies we're talking about, if it continues to hit the same area of the target over and over and over and over again, eventually it is going to cause that divot. This is known as pitting. P-I-T-T-I-N-G. P-I-T-T-I-N-G. Okay? Say again? It just happens over time. It just happens over time. It happens over time also with uh, misuse of MA and KV. Okay, with higher MA and KV, it's going to be stronger bombardment. You're going to increase the chances of damage on that tube. <clears throat> All right. So this is what one looks like. Copper block. Okay, and then you have a tungsten plate right at the end for the conversion of electrons to X-ray energy, okay? Let's go ahead, next page here. This is what's known as a rotating anode. Now with a rotating anode, you're gonna find this with more sophisticated type of equipment utilizing higher energy. So this is typically what you're gonna find in an X-ray department. These are X-ray tubes capable of producing high intensity X-ray beams in shorter time periods. So again, you have the same construction. You have a copper block. You have the face of the disc composed of tungsten, but it's also composed of other material for, for it to be more lightweight and also assist in the disbursement of heat. Now, rotating, so as you're making an exposure, as the electrons are traveling from cathode to anode, Instead of it continuously hitting the same spot as in the stationary anode, the disc is spinning. So now what it's doing is hitting parts of the disc, allowing it to cool off before full rotation and it gets bombarded by those electrons again. So that's the advantage is that the same spot doesn't get hit uh, continuously. The spinning allows the disc to cool off. Therefore, you can use higher energies, and X-ray production is more efficient. <clears throat> okay, it looks something like this. <clears throat> All right, any questions? So does pitting not really occur with this? It still can. Oh, it still can? It still can. Now, once you get pitting in the tube, you essentially have to replace the entire uh, X-ray tube. The glass tube itself, can cost anywhere between thirty to seventy-five thousand dollars for an X-ray tube. Wouldn't that also like reduce the amount of pitting up because it's so more evenly? Right. So if, if if there is if there is pitting and we don't catch it, is, is that what you're talking about? No, I'm just like just by nature, the rotating end of would take longer to pit. Like, yes, it takes longer to pit. So it has yes, long, so it has yeah, longer so life. longer tube life. Right. Yes, okay. longer tube life. Okay, so the rotating anode uh, spins 3,600 to 10,000 revolutions per minute. It is good for heat dissipation, and you can have higher tube currents with short exposure times. It has increased heat loading capabilities, again, because it's spinning. Okay. Two terms I'm going to introduce you to. The first one here is target. We talked about it uh, earlier. The target is the area of the disc that the electrons strike. The target is the area of the disc that the electrons strike. Now, we have two filaments, right? So do you suppose we have two targets? Right? So I've been drawing our, tar uh, our target like this. This is the profile of our disc. Now, if we were to look at the disc in its front view, okay, you would have an area in which the electrons are going to strike the large part of the disc, and you're going to have an area in which the smaller filament is going to correspond with the smaller part of the disc. So you also have two targets. 
okay? One for the large, one for the small. Now, again, going back to the terms, the area in which the, the electrons strike the target is uh, a part of the anode is known as a target. Now, we're talking about the same spot, okay, because all we're doing here is describing the area, is it before or after interaction? So, before interaction is known as a target. When the electrons strike that area and then it's converted into x rays, it is now known as a focal spot. Focal spot. So the area of the target that emits the x-rays is known as the focal spot. Do not get them mixed up. Where did we see that term before, focal spot? Do you guys remember back in the filament, it said large FSS or small FSS? Large focal spot size, a large focal spot size corresponds with the large focal spot. The small focal spot size corresponds with the small focal spot, okay? So focal spot size refers to the filament. The focal spot refers to the anode, the target. You guys got it? Yes, no, yes, yes. Yep. No, yes. All right, so the disk cell, the main component is going to be the, the tungsten. It also is going to have graphite, and you guys know what graphite is, right? You find them in, you know, people fixing up their cars, uh, you find them on planes. It's very, very strong material, but it's light. And because it spins, we want to use material that will alleviate some of the stress in the rotation of the anode. So you have graphite as well as molybdenum. They're very lightweight, and they'll also help in the dissipation of heat. Okay? So tungsten is used because it has a high atomic number. It has a high melting point of approximately 3,400 degrees Celsius or 6,100 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also has the capability of dissipating heat, removing heat. No other material has been found to have such a high conversion efficiency. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, it's all relative. That 1% conversion from electrons to x-rays is high because no other metal has been found to do that. Okay, any questions? Let's go on break, I'll see you guys back here at two.